काम चला जा रहा है ऐसे में जरूरी है Oh my God! But was I not speaking? Ritu, Ritu, was I speaking? Was no, I not? Sir. No? Yes, sir. You are audible now. Sir. I was not audible till now. No, no, no. Oh yeah, my God! I have spoken for five minutes without realizing what I am doing. I was, I was mute. I am sorry. Hello, everybody. Greetings from Pathkind, IGCP Group, and Bat Talks. I am Dr. K K Agarwal. President Akhyar Foundation of India, and you are watching a series of discussions with us. We both are budding ourselves in explaining everything about the COVID-19 virus. Now we are in a problem. Every day the virus is twisting. It's like a movie with multiple twists. The original virus which came in Wuhan is no more there. The virus is changing, 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 and changing. We have different strains now, and we have a strain, original wild strain called six one four strain. Then we had three strain called five zero one strains, which came in UK, South Africa, and Brazil. And now we have two strains in India. And now we have two strains in India. That is six one seven strain and six one eight strain. Six one seven strain basically is a, a double mutation strain, and six one eight is a triple mutation. There are multiple deletions in two four two and two. There are one four five and one four six mutation. Apart from six one four and four eight four mutation. So what is happening now is so we have a new virus. Us in Punjab, we call them as UK variant. Maharashtra says it is six one seven. West Bengal says it is six one eight. North East says it is E gene target failure. Delhi says it's a mix. We don't know. But what is the result? Is instead of a mountain, we are seeing a Eiffel Tower of cases in India. We are seeing a Kutub Minar of cases in India. Rapid rise of number of cases in India. India reaching 300,000 per day. What do we expect? We expect as the number of cases rises, so will be the mutation. If the vaccination is not very, very, very fast, so I do expect more mutations coming. India is now becoming like a separate mutation in every state. These mutations are also number one. They want to move towards Naive population, so they are moving towards children, unvaccinated, unvaccinated children. They don't want to be detected, so they already have E gene target failure and S gene target failure. They don't want to be killed, so therefore they are now resistant to the vaccines. So we are getting Shashi Tharoor's sister got Indian strain, in spite of two Pfizer vaccine. And in India, we are getting the newer. All patients who have received vaccines, a significant number of them, though the government figure is still 0.02 or 0.03 percent, 
I think most of the people are not reporting to the government that after vaccine, they have developed the COVID-19 because there is no mechanism for the government to know. The government will only come to know when they, do, when they go for the second vaccine that they have acquired an infection in the past. So there is a vaccine failure. There is a drug failure. There is an antibody failure. There is a plasma therapy failure. There is a panic everywhere. What causes this mutation? Is it misuse of piroperavir and remdesivir? Is it the rapid rate of immunization? Is it the rapid mutations which are occurring in the body? I have with me Professor Ashok Ratan, formerly at All India Institute of Medical Sciences faculty. He is a WHO lab director of CAREC and PAHO. He's an advisor and mentor Center for Excellence Microbiology and Leaf Knowledge Forum at Pathkind Labs. He is going to talk about the genesis of the two different types of variants we are seeing in India, specifically the 617 vaccine, which is the double mutation, which is being talked about and which has reached the UK and now has been labeled as a VOC or a variant under investigation. And uh, I would call it as a variant of concern. Why? Because it has two mutations, which matches the mutations of, which matches the mutations of South Africa and Brazil. The 618, which has been reported recently has two deletions. And that is in 145 and 146 deletion. Remember we had 144 deletion in UK edition, it has a 145 and 146 deletions. Maybe that this may become more concerned than 617. But how does it matter to a common doctor? Mutations will keep on occurring. We need to find out a strategy, a common strategy to answer. I'm going to end by saying one thing is that when you see the spike protein and when you go from one to 618, when you go towards 618, 3000, 2000 vaccines, a shift to left, that means from bifurcation to spike to, uh, to uh, RBD, RBD to RBM to RBD to NTD. As you shift towards a left mutation, more is the virus of concern. I present to you Professor Ashok Ratan to talk in detail. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. And uh, we would today discuss about COVID-19 second wave and Indian variants of concern. Uh, it was on the 6th of February where the minister, Delhi minister, Health Minister, uh, Mr. Satinder Jain, released the results of fifth zero survey. And the fifth zero survey, which had taken 28,000 samples from 11 districts of Delhi uh, between January 11th and 20, 22nd indicated that more than half of Delhiites were infected. Up till now, a total RT-PCR or a rapid antibody antigen test have been positive in only 600, uh, 635, uh, 6, 635, 1,000 persons. But it indicated that out of the 19 million population, maybe half of them have already experienced the virus and had antibodies against that. Looking at the data, Dr. Gagandeep Kang indicated that these figure point towards herd immunity. And we know that till October of last year, the cases were peaking and we were getting more and more samples. But from 2nd October or thereabout, 
the peak had been reached and the incidents started falling. And by the 6th of Feb, when the minister was making the statement, we had reached the lowest portion in incidents. And in fact, many, very few samples were coming to the lab. Then suddenly it spiked. And as Dr. K.K. Agawal said, that it has become more like an Eiffel Tower and it has dwarfed whatever was there last year. Now, when you look back around the same time, similar kind of thing was happening in Brazil. Brazil had had a very severe outbreak in March 2020. Thereafter, the lockdown was introduced and during the lockdown, when they did zero surveys, they found that a large number of persons, more than 70 per 76 persons were positive, which according to them was more than what was required for herd immunity, taking R0 as three. So 67% should be exposed. As a consequence of the success of lockdown and decreasing numbers and increasing uh, zero prevalence in Brazil, the mandatory masks were reduced, physical distancing were eased, entertainment start started, entertainment venues were reopened, local elections took place. They didn't have kum mela or uh, farmer strike, but suddenly in January, they were right again. The second wave had come in January 2020, 21, and this corresponded with the emergence of a new variant, the P1 variant that we know. So we've had similar kind of experience. We are now experiencing something that Brazil has experienced a few months before us. And we also notice that the old strain normally caused fever, persistent cough, and loss of smell. The new strain seems to come with new symptoms and aches and pains, conjunctivitis, rash on skin, headache, discoloration of fingers or toes, sore throat, and mostly diarrhea are prominent feature of new strain that seems to be circulating. Now, if we try to recapitulate what, what really happens, that the virus is an RNA virus. It has four structural proteins, and one of the prominent structural protein is the spike protein. The spike protein is like a key which attaches itself to the receptor on human cells. These are known as ACE2 receptors. And when it attaches itself to the human cell, it fuses with it and thereby the RNA enters the cytoplasm of the cell. Once it is there in the cytoplasm, like a bully, it takes over the mechanism, the protein synthesis mechanism of the cell and starts multiplying itself. The RNA, as I said, is a single stranded RNA. This has about 3000 base pairs and it has structure for the four structural proteins, but there's a big segment which is for open reading frame which is for a para, for a big protein. It's normally synthesized as polyprotein. Then polyproteins are cut into smaller fragments by proteases. And once these proteases are ready, then they align themselves near the endo, endoplasmic reticulum in the cytoplasm. And... Uh,
and a replicase transcriptase complex is formed. This replicase transcriptase complex will then attach itself to the RNA. And it will then duplicate the RNA. So a positive strand, which is the normal pathogenic RNA, becomes replicated into, into a, a negative strand. Now, while copying this, RNAs make mistakes. And coronavirus has a proofreading mechanism. So that whenever there is a copy mistake, some of them are corrected. From using the negative strand, positive strands are then synthesized. And this positive strand then is either used for, for making the virus or it is used for making subgenomic RNA. And these subgenomic RNA for the four structural proteins are formed and they seem to, to persist for longer period even after the RNA uh, af even after the virus has cleared and they might be these subgenomic messenger RNAs may be the reason why we get persistence of RT-PCR much, much after the patient has fully recovered. But these subgenomic RNAs will make the four structural proteins which will be the spike protein, the envelope protein, the membrane protein and nuclear capsid proteins. And along with these structural proteins and others, they will then assemble near the Golgi apparatus and then bud out from the cell. Once they leave the cell, they seek new ACE2 receptors and the cycle continues and millions and millions of viruses are made. Any replication of RNA leads to mutation and the spike the mutation can occur in any portion of its three uh, three thousand base pair but it is the mutations in the spike protein which binds to the ace2 receptor which have consequences mutations and other sites are normally silent So it was in September that a paper in, in Nature tried to evaluate what would happen to mutations. And last year, the thinking was that there were not too many mutations that occurred. That is the time when they realized that there was one mutation in the spike, in one mutation which is D614 converted into G at, at the site of 614, um, aspartic acid con converted into glycine, and that led to unfolding of the pentamere. And suddenly you find that from, from nearly 0% prevalence, it became the dominant dominant uh, uh, virus that was available starting from Asia, then all over the world. Now 614G is the dominant virus in that site. If we take a step back, that because there is proofreading ability of coronavirus, the mutations are, which are acquired by the virus are about one per month. On the other hand, influenza, which has segmented virus, segmented RNAs, it acquires two mutations per month. And HIV acquires about four mutations at the same time. So there are mutations and mutations are of some concerns, but uh, other viruses mutate much faster. And as I said, mutations seem to occur all across the 3,000 3, base pair that are there. But it is the mutation in the 
spike protein which cause concern. And one of the mutations, as I've just indicated, was in the spike protein in which G became, in which D became, D at position 614 became G, and that led to a better connect, better fit as a consequence that became the dominant protein. And all that had changed was that GAU became GGU. So adenine became guanine. One change and D614 is not at the receptor binding site. It is away from the receptor binding site, but because glycine folded in a different way, it opened up, it became an open configuration. The spike protein consists of three pentamers. These pentamers are in closed situation. When D614 occurred, it opened up this, and it's been noticed that mutation that loosened the spike protein will offer advantage to the virus and virus will be able to open. Subsequently, it has been noticed that mutations, which whenever there is one of the pentamer is opened, it is more in, it is infectious, but two opening and three opening will make it even more infectious. Undergoing what we call these point mutations, so that's just substitution of one nucleotide by another. Um, but then they have another way in which they can vary that's kind of the marvel sex um, <laughs> sort of way, and that it requires two viruses to be infecting the same cell, and flu has the segmented genome, which means uh, they're just these separate segments, and so you can get when two viruses are infecting the same cell, um, when they start replicating, those two segments can be repackaged so that effectively you've got genes, segments from one virus and gene segments from another. So uh, the viral sex is more common in influenza in coronavirus, normally it is by point mutation that we're getting the changes that we're getting. But, and we know that spike protein is very important since spike protein binds to ACE2 receptors and antibodies which can block this spike protein from attaching to ACE2 receptors are protective. So any mutation which escapes this will have immune escape mechanism. And there's also been seen that there's not only one site that it attaches, then whenever they have made a, a monoclonal antibodies and then looked at the site where they bind, they notice that there are sites both on the receptor binding site as well as the nucleotide uh, towards the end, end site and so there are about 18 to 19 sites that uh, the monoclonal antibodies bind and cause nuclearization. So if there's accumulation of 19, uh, 19 mutations, then we might that might lead to complete failure. But if it is one or two mutations that will lead to some decrease in affinity, but not complete immune escape. It was, it's also been seen that viruses which have proofreading mechanism, they normally survive by causing uh, deletions. And even in coronavirus, deletions are frequent. And you notice that they are more towards the RBD than towards the S2. So mutations are escape mechanisms so that things that they are, the virus was supposed to do would be, uh, or um, or elements which are against the virus could be uh, could be escaped from by causing these deletions. These deletions could be two or three base pair or more. One deletion that we've talked about is deletion in the spike protein at position 69 and 70. And that is a deletion of uh, concern because that is the place where the primer for the spike protein for RT-PCR bind. And uh, anybody who used Thermo Fisher's uh, kits, they would notice that they would then 
there were these viruses which had mutation, especially in the UK virus, where S gene became silent. There are other deletions that are there in position 144 in B117 and position 242 in B1 uh, in that Brazilian stain. But uh, changes in RBD in the amino acid between 319 and 541 are the most important and the most significant mutations that can occur. Now, for, uh, for Thermo Fisher, we, whenever we would, this is a positive report, and you would notice that there is MS2, which is the, uh, which is the control gene to indicate that reaction has occurred. And there are three virus specific genes, ORF1A, AB gene, S gene, and N gene. If there is the UK mutant, which has uh, the Nelly mutation, that is N501Y, then S gene will be silenced. But even if S gene is silenced, you would see that because of the presence of ORF1AB gene, and N gene, the positive samples will be reported positive without any trouble. And in fact, because this was this is a costly uh, test, most of the labs have now shifted to E gene and N gene rather than use these. Now, uh, the uh, the variants that have emerged have been classified into three. Luckily. At this moment, there's no variant of high consequence. We only have variant of interest or variant of concern. Variant of an interest is a variant with specific genetic markers that have been associated with changes to the receptor binding site, reduced neutralization by antibodies generated against previous infection or after vaccination, reduced efficacy of treatment, potential diagnostic impact of predictive increase in transmissibility or disease severity. But variant of concern is a variant where there is evidence of an increase in transmissibility, more severe disease, that means increased hospitalization or death, significant reduction in neutralizing, neutralization by antibodies generated during previous infection or vaccination, reduced effectiveness of treatment of vaccines or diagnostic detection failure. So the variant of, uh, of concern are now circulating in India. Variant of high consequence would be a variant that has clear evidence that preventive measures or medical countermeasures have significantly reduced effectiveness relative to previous circulating variants. And that has not been detected yet. So we are at the stage where we have at least three variants of concern moving around in the world and three in India. The consequence of emergence of variant of concern would be that there'll be increased replication of the virus in cells. That would mean that there's increased virus load, increased receptor binding. That would mean increased spread, increased virulence, which means increased hospitalization, reduced efficacy of treatment, which means increased mortality, increased reinfection due to immune escape, Decreased neutralization by serum or plasma, that means a reinfection would occur, and deletion of primer binding sites, which would mean that RT PCR or any other test that we use for nucleic acid detection may be negative. And this may require enhanced sequence surveillance, enhanced laboratory characterization about whether it is neutralized by this virus or that virus, or whether it can grow in vitro or not, 
and then epidemiological investigations to assess ease of spread of to others, severity of disease, risk of reinfection, potency of available vaccines, and need for different boosters in the vaccines. Now, uh, we have already discussed about D614G spike mutation, and this was the first significant mutation which gave a clear advantage to the virus. And as a consequence, the prevalence of D614G increased and more and more of the viruses that you isolate now have this mutation because this gives them a clear advantage. There are three other viruses with three other mutations which have led to, uh, led to clear advantages to the virus and they have accumulated. And besides these three, there are two other mutations which have appeared in California or in India where advantage is there to the virus. And so more and more of the viruses are being, uh, being seen with these mutations. I may mention that though people have been talking about double mutation or triple mutation, most of these viruses have 14 to 17 mutations. These are these double or triple are one or two or three characteristics which are advantages to the virus and that's why they persist and they are more frequently found. But any virus now which is isolated, you will find multiple mutations. As you notice with the lines here, the the mutation, another mutation that has occurred in is in the B1117, which is the UK strain. This has 50% increase in transmission, transmission, likely increased severity based on hospitalization and case fatality rate, minimal impact on neutralization, but it was, uh, it didn't have any escape mechanism from immune uh, uh, immune treatment, but and it had minimal impact on neutralization by convalescent and post vaccination sera. This is the B117 uh, lineage. Another lineage is B351 lineage. This mutation uh, is at the tip of the spike protein. Uh, this has not only N501Y, which is the hallmark of the UK strain, but it also has E484K, which then allows it to escape antibodies. And along with that, it has K417N, which also helps the virus to bind more tightly to the human cells. As you notice there, that there are at least 17 different mutations, but these three mutations are the most prominent ones which give advantage to the virus. The other lineage is P1 virus. Again, you'll find that here they have N501Y, which is the same mutation in UK, E484K, which is the South African mutation, and K417T rather than N, which, uh, which gives it the advantage to latch on to the cells tighter. And this is the P1 uh, variant was the one which was responsible mainly for the resurgence of, uh, of, of the second wave in, uh, in Brazil. Now, uh, N501Y mutation is the United Kingdom's mutation. It first emerged in September as an unusual large number of mutations, 17, as I said. Preliminary evidence indicated that it may be more infectious, but, uh, and it may lead to a more disease severity. And variant continues to increase in prevalence also in USA and in, as uh, Dr. 
KK Agarwal indicated that it is also prevalent in the Punjab in Punjab because of the uh, migrants which have come back from UK. In a variant isolated in the UK, a single change in the genetic code switched one amino acid for another. That mutation is called N501Y, and it made the protein fold in a slightly different way. That shift makes it fit just a little bit better into the receptor on human cell surfaces, like a key into a lock. So five, besides 614, it's 501 which gave advantage and most of the new variants have retained that advantage. In South Africa, they had E484K spike uh, mutation, which first emerged in October 2020. Uh, it spread quickly and uh, uh, it spread, uh, it causes a large number of deaths. It has been associated with slightly reduced efficacy that it is not neutralized by convalescent serum and antibodies produced as a consequence of vaccination by Moderna and Pfizer have slightly reduced efficacy against E484K uh, strain. This has also now been noticed in West Bengal, which will be our 618 strain. There's also other mutations that have appeared. And in India, uh, though we've done less sequencing than others, but still I was told about 17,000 sequencing has been done. And it was uh, Vinod Sarkaria, uh, who's based at Institute of Genomic and Integrated Biology in Delhi, uh, which is a CSIR institute. Uh, he has reported a number of things. The first one was that there was reinfection in a healthcare worker, a symptomatic infection. And then they noticed that uh, there was, as you notice here, there's a, no, a lot number of changes. The mutations, there are about 14 mutations, but the mutation which was of interest was, uh, was N440K. This was, this was initially seen in Kerala, then in Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. And it's moldered there for quite some time. So this is the first mutation of interest, of consequence actually, uh, which was noticed and not paid too much attention to. But luckily this did not spread as much as the new VOC that has spread, which has, uh, which has two mutations. And this again, from an asymptomatic person, again, it's been noticed that there are, there are mutations present. And as a consequence of these two mutations, the, uh, this happened in, uh, in Maharashtra. And after Maharashtra, it's been found in Delhi and in at least 16 other states all over, the, all over, the, all over India. So when you look at the mutations, you find that B117 has deletions as well as many multiple spike mutations. Then we have B1351, which again has which has retained some of the best mutations, plus got E484K and K4417N, which is a new mutation that they, uh, that was added to the UK mutation. And the Brazilian mutation, which was first seen is a Brazilian person in Japan. And that's why it's written as Japan as well as Brazil. But that mutation has K417N or T. And they have been acquiring these mutations from one strain to the other. When it comes to India, there was a Californian mutation, which is for, uh, 542R. 542R was uh, the L452R 452, was seen in California. And then suddenly you find that in India, e 48 k instead of E48K, 484K, 
we had E484Q. And along with that, it had a mutation from California, uh, equivalent to the California mutation, where L452R also occurred. And this, some people call as double mutations, though overall in Maharashtra, it had about 14 mutations. But these two mutations have increased the spread. There's immune escape, ability to infect children, increase hospitalization, and increase deaths. So it is the emergence of this E484Q and L452R, the double mutant, which is causing the upsurge of this. And this is highly, the, the second wave is caused, is driven by these, these mutations. When you take a look back, you find that D614G became a common factor in all the strains. Along with that, the second one was the UK strain got N501Y and that was retained in other strains too. Along with that, you had addition of E484 in South Africa and then K417T in, uh, in Brazil. So this is how the the mutations which give advantage to the virus are retained and then continued and more and more mutations or deletions are added on as the virus survives and grows. The UK, the major part of UK variant is that there is mutation uh, and a mutation in 501 and that increases entry of the cell and replicating and increases risk of death. In the South, Cold, uh, South African mutation, there is immune escape, which is added onto N501Y mutation, which was there in the UK strain. In the Brazilian strain, there are three mutations, N501Y, which is the UK mutation, E484K, which is the South African mutation, and K417T and the Indian strain has a mutation of E484Q which enables the virus to enter the cell of human cell and L452R which mutation is believed to increase the strain's infectivity and now of course we have the triple mutant where, uh, where what has been added is E484K E484K, as you see, is the South African variant, which then provides immune escape. Um, the lab results from the viruses indicate that uh, with the original Wuhan strain, as well as uh, the, uh, that means the D614 mutant, there was no loss of neutralization. But the moment you move on to uh, three, uh, three, five, B1351 or, or 117, you'll find uh, 117, there's no loss of mutation, no loss of neutralization. But in 351, there's some decrease in uh, neutralization by the Pfizer vaccine. Same is the result with Moderna vaccine, that as long as we are with D6. 614G or N501Y, there is no decrease. But the moment we move on from B117 to, uh, to, uh, to 351, there is a decrease. 351, as you notice here, there is a decrease in neutralization. Luckily, Covaxin has come up with indication that since it is not only producing antibodies to spike protein, but to whole range of uh, ro uh, uh, whole range of antigens. Neutralization of these viruses by antibodies produced as a consequence of Covaxin are not affected by these mutations. 
it's also been suggested that novax uh, covid vaccine will be will protect against the variant and johnson and johnson though it is decreased in africa it uh, its efficacy was 66% so which was decreased than what efficacy was there in in, uh, in usa but is still effective and moderna has then uh, made a made a booster and taken it to phase 1 which incorporates the 614 d mutation the 501 y mutation and the 484 uh, k mutation it's also been suggested that maybe mixing viruses might give us better results and so if as many of us have not responded to covid shield if we take a second booster with covaxin we might get better results uh, it's also been suggested that we should not be sticking only to antibodies because protection in life may be made available by the cell mediated immunity also and the antigens which stimulate cell mediated immunity are different and varied in real life situation looking at what has happened in israel they notice that if you do not take the vaccine then you uh, then 12944 people got infected that is 166 per 10000 persons but those who received the vaccine 254 persons got infected that is 6 per 10000 persons and they also notice that after you've taken the second dose the first few days you are still not very well protected but after about 21 days you are fully protected from serious illness even in india uh, a couple of days back the dg icmr presented this finding indicating that whether you look at covaxin and covishield and uh, six um, and about 12 crores uh, vaccinations have been given but the revax and uh, the reinfection seems to be about 0.04% or 0.03% uh, we need to take that into consideration that many persons may not have reported back but there is clear evidence that vaccination will protect now uh, they have also released data indicating that covaxin is effective against the variant and today in the newspaper there was a report that uh, in ccmb they found that antibodies produced as a consequence of covid shield are also neutralizing the variant uh, citizen but vaccines will play its role and there is evidence that in spite of uh, very, uh, vaccine hesit- hesitancy and politics associated with it the vaccine is safe and effective but citizens have a bigger role to play and one is to come forward and take the vaccine the second dose as well as any booster using the variant that might become available uh, we must wear mask whenever in public and do not show my face should be the norm social distancing of at least 6 feet in spite of the finding that the virus is transmitted by air and not only by close contact no congregation indoor increase air changes in ac building should occur in the ot they have 16 exchanges so maybe the engineers should look at what as the number of exchanges they should have we should have respiratory and cough etiquette and frequent hand washing and we must have consistent and persistent implementation of these simple steps and we must also have zero tolerance for deviant behavior looking at all the evidence i would say that in india a deviation our deviation from covid appropriate behavior is currently the biggest variant of concern and not the virus
Is it over? Yes, sir. Okay. So it was a beautiful presentation. I will take you for some question answers to one of the slides which you presented. And I want to spend some time here. This is your slide which I want to share. Okay, let's devote some time here in this particular slide. Yes, sir. Can you see a peculiar thing here? That as the mutations are occurring, they are occurring towards a shift to the left. Yes, sir. So, so. Sir, because the, the domain which binds to the receptor. See, no, 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 no. It could have come, it could have started from here to here and then here. I'm talking about there is a shift, gradual shift. Deletions on this area and substitutions from here to here to here to here. That's what I'm trying to say. So there are, what I'm trying to say, they, that means severity of the virus is on the left. All the properties of the virus are in the left portion of the S1. This is what I'm trying to say. Now, yes, why, I'm, why I'm saying is that you say Covaxin is better. Okay. Covishield may not be. What I'm trying to say is whole virus, it is covering the whole from here to here, a killed virus will always be better because in a Covishield and Johnson & Johnson, Sputnik, we don't know which part of the spike they have taken. That's what I'm trying to say. You said? I so said they've taken the whole spike, 1200 and... 1273, this is only, as you notice here, this 1273 spike protein consists of 1273 amino acids. And uh, initially, the about 700 or so will be the S1 and then will be S2. Out of the 700... So you, they are taking the gene, so they are taking the complete RNA gene of spike protein. Of spike protein. Yes, sir. and there is some more added in front so that that normally RNA is very susceptible to a minor uh, to, uh, to that is adjuvant. I'm not talking about an adjuvant. I'm only talking about that means all vector vaccines contain complete S gene. So yes, there is no difference between a messenger RNA vaccine and this vaccine as far as only in the presentation they would have these 1273 because this is the Wuhan strain. So initially, initial starting point of uh, uh, of whether it is uh, uh, Pfizer, whether it is Moderna, or whether it is AstraZeneca, or or J Johnson and Johnson or Covishield, all of them have the st same starting point. They would add a few a few sequences before or after for protection, so that the, the this uh, from 1 to 1273 would be there plus added some more. So th there was a suggestion that is why uh, in Johnson & Johnson it is persistent and that's why you need only one dose rather than two. In others it is not that persistent and that is why you need to give a booster. Well, that's how they yeah. try to explain. So I'm only trying to say is and what's the difference between this and Covaxin? Covaxin contains... No, Covaxin no. will contain the whole virus. Sir. So yes. it may yes. not be very specific. Uh, Covaxin is not only binding to the antibodies, but uh, not only binding to the spike. Uh, you could imagine that suppose somebody is attacking us with a knife. The, the messenger RNA is trying to hold the hand which holds, holds the knife and prevent it from harming us. Covaxin will be trying to catch hold of the legs as well as the body as well as the hand with equal sincerity. So sometimes if it is mutation, if mutations is so too frequent. What do, we, what do we say today? Covaxin is better than Covaxin? No, no sir. Each one of them have their own role. So what, is um, the role? what is the role of Covishield now? Covishield will be that it will produce because it is uh, it's a DNA vaccine, so it is more stable. So I think we made the right choice of not taking uh, Pfizer or Moderna 
because storing things at minus 70 no, no. let's let's not talk about the practical aspect of it yes let's talk about when i when i eat if i get it question is not that question is what about sputnik night sputnik because, have, have the same advantage the sir the second part was 97 percent Sput sputnik is saying 97 percent uh, sputnik used a good technology a good uh, strategy in the sense that they felt that we will produce antibodies not only to the spike protein but also to the adenovirus so that uh, be between the there are two different adenoviruses they are using so they are hoping so, that what i'm trying to say is as on today as on today uh, so sputnik will overlay the astrazeneca sputnik will overlay the because efficacy is 97.5 percent uh, i think though uh, those uh, uh, those are artificial to a certain extent in the sense that uh, when you want to make a comparison, either it should be head-to-head -head -head comparison or the method should be compar comparative. In this, uh, Moderna and Pfizer uh, tested only those which were symptomatic patients. So they, they did not sample everybody. While in AstraZeneca, they sampled everybody and whenever somebody was found to be positive, that would mean that they became, whether they were carriers or they were suffering from I'm this. Only, I'm only comparing apple to apple, AstraZeneca versus Sputnik. I'm uh, not comparing the AstraZeneca versus Sputnik. The difference between AstraZeneca and uh, Sputnik will be that Sputnik uses two different human adenoviruses while uh, AstraZeneca has used one uh, chimpanzee virus. Both these, bo uh, all the three adenoviruses are replication devoid so that they cannot multiply. They are just acting as a carrier, carriage, but they themselves are proteins, so we can produce antibodies to it. Agreed. But then, as on today, as on today, the present data says that. Sputnik may be better than AstraZeneca. No clots, no controversies. I won't say no clots, no demonstrable clots, no controversies being used much more than Covishield because it started in August in uh, Russia and uh, it carries the advantage of Johnson & Johnson and it carries the advantage of two vaccines. Hmm. It, I, I, I think uh, Sputnik also, Sputnik and Johnson and Johnson. Why, why I'm asking this question is okay. I haven't formed antibodies. I'm looking for the third one. Should I go for Sputnik or should I go to Pfizer or Moderna? Sir, because they would use this. That means we have not responded. Even I have not got any antibodies and that we have not responded to the spike protein. So if now we have exposure to something like Covaxin, which has all antigens of uh, the virus, we might have a better chance of responding to something or the other. Okay, so you are saying that we should go for a, a, a la carte than a buffet. Another uh, buffet, another dosa from the another company, we should go for a buffet of a dhaba, go for a buffet and take a buffet and everything together. It might work. Uh, of course, we are not sure because ultimately they yes, try yes. to indicate yes, as we get older, as we get older, our antibody response becomes less. So, if that is true, then we may not respond even to Covaxin. So, let me go back to the study which you have shown neutralization of UK variant vaccinated. So, it is showing that Covaxin did neutralize other things. Yes. Okay. So let me summarize what uh, Professor Ashokratan has said, that variants are, will keep on occurring. More variants are likely to come. Every state may develop a separate state variant, as we have in US, California, Australia, and we have a New York variant. So it is possible in India, you will have multiple variants. Therefore, we need to have two examples. One example is very clear in Michigan with the vaccination of around 40%. The new peak is narrower 
then the earlier peak, which is wider. We have always also seen in other countries as the vaccination rate increases, the infection rate will reduce. Number two, we do expect till the children's vaccination is not available, we may see a spurt in cases in children much more than it is evident today because that's the virus behavior. It will go towards unexposed population. So it will mutate to shift to unmutated population because we are not talking about universal immunization as on today. For example, will India have a third wave? The third wave will always be slower than the second wave because of increased vaccination. And because of increased density, we may achieve a herd immunity much faster. Herd immunity, does it make a difference? We have seen in Michigan, we have seen Michigan, we have seen a vaccine herd immunity. And in Brazil, we have seen a natural herd immunity had not made a difference. And that's what we are seeing in Delhi. The so-called herd immunity, reason being 40% of us are still infection. It's not like polio, that orofecal route, you will get the immunity in the rest. So at this moment, we are seeing couple of unanswered questions, which will come as a part of separate discussion sometimes later. We are seeing number one, like in Israel, we are seeing in India, in the first week after the vaccination, we are seeing a spurt of number of positive cases. What is the reason? Let the buddhijivis come forward and answer. At this moment, the, and the observations are, in the first week after the vaccination first or second, we are seeing the positivity rate of COVID-19 is high. Is it disease enhancement? Is it reduce incubation period? Is it carrying the infection from the vaccination site? We don't know. But definitely we are seeing every day we are seeing these particular types of cases. The second thing which we are observing is that after the COVID, if you get a vaccine or after the vaccine, you are getting COVID. We are seeing precipitation of systemic inflammation, non-responding fever, pneumonia only mild. I'm talking about mild means less than eight by 25. CRP much higher than in the first wave. Fever not responding to two or three antibiotics. And these are the people where we are seeing rising D-dimer and low platelet count. Is it activation of TH17 response? Is it TGF beta response? We don't know. What we know is this new viruses which are coming are notorious and they are behaving differently. I feel like calling them as COVID-19, 20, 21, 22, I may call them as because every year the virus is changing. The original Wuhan virus is no more seen. I also feel DCVI should consider giving approval to various companies to update their virus like a computer every two months, that every batch may contain a different virus without going through the trials. That may be one possibility. That means every time there is a virus change, China is considering mixing a couple of virus strains together to make a virus like we do it in Pneumo 23 or Pneumo. We have flu vaccine various rare strains are attached to them. That's all for today. We'll be back again with another seminar. Let me thank Professor Ratan to be here. Thank you very much. <laughs>